Hello, this is Ricardo, Technical Marketing Engineer for Cisco Intersight. Workflows can have any number of inputs and outputs, and those can be seen as the variables of a workflow. Workflow inputs can eventually be mapped to individual tasks and reused within the workflow. An example would be a virtual machine name. When creating an input, you can choose among different data types. It can be a primitive data type like string, integer, or float, or can be a specialized type like a VMware data center or cluster, which come with the platform. In this case, you would set an input using the string data type as the virtual machine name is a string. However, based on the automation you want to create or the targets you are orchestrating, there are cases where you won't find the perfect fit. In this case, Intersight Cloud Orchestrator gives you the chance to create your own custom data types. In the Orchestration tab, click on Data Types. The system defaults to the All Data Types tab, which returns the list of all data types you have access to. The System Data Types tab displays the built-in data types. You can use those data types in your workflows, but you can't delete or modify them. My data types shows all custom data types, which are the one you've built. You can use, delete, or modify any of those objects. To create a new data type, click on Create Data Type. Custom data types can be simple or composite. A sample use case for a simple custom data type would be the definition of a virtual machine named data type. So you can use it in all workflows with built-in validation. In this case, the type is going to be string. We'd say it must be minimum five characters long, maximum 10. We'll also set a regex validation rule to enforce the prefix vm dash. A composite custom data type includes multiple definitions that can be of the same type or a mix of data types. As an example, we are going to create a virtual machine specs custom data type. The first definition would be our virtual machine name. We add another definition, which is going to represent the number of desired CPUs. This is going to be an integer. We're going to set a minimum of one and a maximum of four. In the previous section at the bottom of the page, you can check your rules and how this is going to appear to the workflow users. Hit save once you're done. Under my data types, you can now find the custom data types you've created. Let's go ahead and use them in a proper workflow. We'll start with the simple custom data type you've created, virtual machine name. We are going to select this data type as an input type. We can map this input using a direct mapping. This time we will use the composite custom data type, Visual Machine Specs. You can use direct mapping to map composite custom data types as you would do with the simple ones. 